So far, we've learned that energy cycles throughout an ecosystem. And that energy does not go full circle. Once it's been used by an organism, only 10% of that energy gets transferred. So it is limited. Now, nutrients, matter, other chemicals in the environment do cycle in and out of the ecosystem. Some of them are needed by many other organisms within the ecosystem. So things like carbon, things like oxygen, okay, need to be consumed by other organisms so that way they can continue to reproduce. So let's find out exactly how matter cycles in and out of an ecosystem. One of the first things that we're going to learn about um, are, is the water cycle. And this is the first of what we call a biogeochemical cycle. Because not only is it a chemical compound, but it cycles through the um, what we call the biotic aspect of the ecosystem. So it goes through the organisms. All living things require water. And then it also cycles through the geography. So that is the environment itself. It's the abiotic portion of the habitat. Now, the water cycle, or the hydrologic cycle, um, is the circular pathway of water on Earth. So organisms all have bodies made mostly of water. And when we look at the diagram, we can see that water can cycle using some common processes that we're already familiar with. So water that's in the ocean or in a lake evaporates into the atmosphere. It then condenses, forms a cloud over land, and rains. Excuse the interruption. And we'll pause. We'll wait. Anyhow, the precipitation falls to the ground, and then the runoff helps provide the vegetation with water for growth. Some of it seeps down into the ground, down over here, into our groundwater supply. And so that's what we use um, for drinking water um, as, as humans. Now, the vegetation over here is another way that they help recycle the water in the environment. They use a process called transpiration. It's what keeps plants cool when it gets really hot out. They basically release water vapor from their leaves, almost like perspiration in humans. We sweat in order to cool off. In plants, they use transpiration. So there are other elements that are essential for life, and they also cycle through ecosystems. So this idea of the biogeochemical cycle is that circular movement of the chemical through the biological and geological parts of the ecosystem. The main processes involved in the oxygen cycle are photosynthesis and respiration. Again, two more processes that we're pretty familiar with. The oxygen cycles indirectly through an ecosystem by the cycling of other nutrients. So in the process of photosynthesis, vegetation takes in carbon dioxide, uses it to create its own energy in the form of sugars, and as a byproduct releases oxygen into the environment. Now, everybody knows when we breathe, our respiration process takes in oxygen gas and then releases carbon dioxide. So it's a circular pathway of oxygen in two forms, oxygen gas and carbon dioxide gas, used in two different processes, respiration and photosynthesis. Now, carbon is considered the building block of life. Carbon is used to create sugars. Sugars are carbohydrates. That's what we use for energy. Carbon is also utilized in compounds that make up your skin, your hair, your, the proteins in your body, everything. So carbon's pretty important. Carbon moves from carbon in the atmosphere through the food web and then returns to the atmosphere using several different processes. Some key processes that we're involved with include burning of fossil fuels. So we've got combustion going on over here by this factory. You can see there's fossil fuels being um, burned and carbon dioxide is being emitted into the air. Some carbon 
um, when it's returned to the earth is stored in carbon sinks okay um, now how else is carbon recycled well we already talked about the photosynthesis and respiration aspect the carbon um, that is utilized in photosynthesis is in the form of glucose C6 H12 O6 for respiration right if we eat the vegetation we're taking in carbon but how do we release it respiration again we take in oxygen release carbon dioxide as organisms decompose carbon is also returned to the soil um, where it helps form fossil fuels then we also can find carbon dioxide dissolved in water from the organisms that use respiration or photosynthesis for that matter in an aquatic ecosystem now nitrogen is really important because nitrogen is utilized in order to create DNA and RNA two of the very very important compounds that help make living things what they are control all of our life processes the nitrogen cycle mostly takes place underground there are some bacteria that can convert gaseous nitrogen from the atmosphere into ammonia through a process called nitrogen fixation it fixes the nitrogen into a liquid format so that the plants can absorb the nitrogen through their roots some nitrogen fixing bacteria actually live right on the nodules of those roots of the plants others might live freely in the soil if there's an area where there's not nitrogen rich soil what do you think is going to happen the plants aren't going to be able to grow very well what if you were in agriculture and you were a farmer trying to grow a crop what would you do to put nitrogen into the soil hmm think about that one as we look at the rest of the nitrogen cycle we can see some other key processes obviously there's ingestion okay animals eat the plants that's how they get their nitrogen that's how we get ours we don't breathe it in we can't use it in the gaseous form so it's up to the decomposers to help put nitrogen back into the soil from the organisms that live on earth so then we've got more bacteria helping decompose and converting the nitrogen into several different formats so that way it can be in the form that then can be absorbed by the plants now there are some bacteria called denitrifying bacteria over here that will help put nitrogen back into the atmosphere okay but then there are still those nitrogen fixing bacteria that help convert it back into the format that can be used by all living things so let's look a little bit more specifically at that process ammonia is released into the soil and is transformed into what's called ammonium okay where does the ammonia come from ammonia is found in urine <laughs> one key component but it's also released through decomposition so after that ammonification occurs the nitrifying bacteria then change the ammonium into a nitrate the nitrogen then can move through the food web and return to the soil again during decomposition the final cycle that we're going to look at is called the phosphorus cycle phosphorus is important in living things because it creates an energy storing molecule called ATP adenosine triphosphate you'll hear that word again in the future in future units so right now you just need to know that it's important for the use and production of energy within our bodies the phosphorus cycle takes place at and below ground level it usually does not go into the atmosphere at all phosphorus does not form a gas so phosphate is usually released by weathering by weather by the weathering of rocks sorry about that phosphorus itself moves through the food web and returns to the soil during decomposition so when organisms consume other organisms you get that phosphorus from that organism as it leaches into the groundwater from the soil it gets locked into rock sediments both mining as well as agriculture add phosphorus into our environment if phosphorus is needed by plants 
and they can't consume, how do plants get phosphorus? Well, remember that thought I told you to think about? How would a farmer get nitrogen into the soil if the, the soil is not very rich or fertile? Huh, fertile. Because phosphorus is needed as well, many of the fertilizers used in agriculture add both nitrogen as well as phosphorus into the environment. So, there you have it. We've got the phosphorus cycle, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, and the hydrologic cycle. 